Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how I used Immatcher and some other plugins to create this song I recently released called Jackie George. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, please go check it out. I did it as kind of like a vintage thing uh, in tribute to my father. We used to listen to old Jackie Wilson uh, when we were going on a vacation down and uh, taking a road trip down through Arkansas. So it's always reminded me of that, and I wanted to do something as kind of a, a tribute to that. And so this is what I came up with. I wanted to give this kind of a vintage feel, so I used Immatcher and other plugins to kind of do that. At the very beginning, I'm doing something here, and it sounds almost like a vintage old record. I'll let you listen to it. It sounds like this. So as you hear, it doesn't sound like any kind of like modern music. It sounds like something you'd hear on like an old record player or something. And I'll show you how I did that. I actually used MXXX, and I think I explained this in a previous video, but I'll explain it briefly here. Move some of this stuff out of the way so we can see this a little bit more clearly. So I used a number of processors to do this. This is a perfect use for MXXX, I believe. And so I used a saturator here, and this would just, you know, add some dirt to everything and also compress it just a little bit, but mostly add some old style distortion. Not too much though. That's why I left it on soft here, like soft three. Okay. The other effect I have on here is vibrato. You're probably not able to hear this as like vibrato. You don't hear it going ee, ee, like that. And that's because I have the rate up here at like 18 hertz. This is really fast and I have the depth down. But a lots of the old, I think probably stereos, but other things too, I think tape as well, creates this like wow and flutter. And this will kind of simulate that. And it almost sounds like a distortion. If you take it off, you're kind of like, oh, it's, let me see if I can turn it on and off and you can hear it. It's a bit subtle, but hopefully you can hear it. So if I turn the depth up more, you'll be able to hear more of it, but I don't know if, yeah, let me see if I can do it here just so it's more apparent. So you can hear if you turn it up, it's like, whoa, that's really like almost distorted, uh, kind of a strange to style distorted distortion. But here I kept it low, so you're getting a little bit of that feel, but not too much. And finally, I have the band pass. So I'm starting here at 5,000 hertz for the low pass filter and 200 for the high pass filter. And the final thing I have on here is just stereo processor. This isn't doing anything except making it mono. And I'm using the multi parameters here for the band pass, and this will open over time. So it goes from 200 hertz down to 20 hertz for the high pass filter, and this goes from 5,000 hertz up to 2,000 hertz uh, for the low pass filter. So if you listen, you hear it opening up and I have this as a multi-parameter so it happens at the same time and you see it here, it's opening up gradually. When it gets to the top here, I'm just turning MXXX off so you're not getting that through the rest of the track. I wanted to kind of go from like vintage sound to modern sound. So let's listen to that. <laughs> I think you get the idea. So that's all I did for MXXX. The next thing I did is I went into M Turbo Comp MB. I'm using the multi band version because I'm using mid side processing. So you can barely see it here, but I have actually two different compressors working at the same time, and this is doing mid side. It looks a little bit strange, but when you have it in mid side mode, like you see it here, just right click to get that up there if you want to see that. Um, your right side is going to be your side, and your left side is going to be your mid signal. So to get it all mid, you need to slide your side signal over, and you'll just have a little sliver of mid. If you don't have that, you're going to get the mids and sides kind of mixed up, because this is like a, a gradual how much uh, it blends it in. So here's side, here's mid. Uh, so I'll let you hear just 
the mid signal, it sounds like this. So that's our mid signal. Here's a side signal. So as you see, I'm doing separate compression on each of these. I'm using the fair meld for this. Just kind of give it a vintage sound. I'm actually using a fair amount of uh, saturation for this too. Uh, I just wanted to go for a vintage sound and I thought this would be a good compressor for this. I used two of the same compressors, the fair meld for the mid and the side, but you actually don't need to do that. If you prefer to have different compressors for your mid and side signals, you can definitely do that. And sometimes that will give you a really good effect. So try that yourself. But for this, I wanted to do the vintage way. I used fair meld on the mids and the sides. So that's all I'm doing for this. Uh, it made it a bit louder, but I'll bypass it so you can hear where it sounds on and off. And by doing this, I just gave it a little bit more of a, a stereo spread, I think. So for me, this just kind of brought things forward and made it pop a little bit more. So there you go. Now, the other thing I have is M Matcher. I'll show you this afterwards. And I have M Auto Dynamic EQ. And that's just because when I used the M Matcher, it made things a little bit too bright in the top end. So I put this afterwards to try to control that using a low shelf and a little bit of the uh, low pass filter here like this. <laughs> I like to do things this way. Sometimes I can use this six uh, decibels per octave low pass filter and bring it down just a little bit. And then I'll put a shelf on here, like a low shelf or it's high shelf actually, and then use it dynamically. So that way only when you're hitting those high notes, like a cymbal hit or something, it'll kind of clamp down on it. But normally it'll let everything through. And for me, that sounds good. So that's all I did there. But let's turn these off for now. And I have another in matcher here. This is just blank. And so I'm going to show you pretty much how I did this. When I go in here, the first thing I probably want to do is just go to this little music tab here and just click this. All this will do is it'll set everything up for me the way uh, is the best, I think. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to analyze everything. So just play your song. You don't have to play the whole thing. Just play the most representative parts. Don't play like a slow part with a solo instrument. That's not going to be good. Play a part where everything's playing, you know, uh, maybe the chorus or something and, you know, get a good frequency analysis. So here we go. It automatically does everything for you. Uh, and you might be wondering, like, what are these different thick lines and thin lines? So it's easy to see the red is the reference and the green is the input or your song in this case. The thick lines are going to be your mid signal and the thin lines are going to be your side signal. So it's going to process everything separately. Now, we have the reference analysis here and we can go in here and choose whatever we want. So this is set to pop music. It just starts here automatically. So it's on. You know, some Adele, which actually I don't think sounds that bad. You might need to adjust the output. Let me see if the output and input are aligned. <laughs> I 
Actually, I'm not too mad about, about that. <laughs> that actually sounds all right. Um, but normally you want to kind of choose something that's similar to what your music is. So find whatever genre it is. Like I would say this is more R&B, but in here, this is kind of like newer R&B or modern R&B. And I'm probably looking at something like vintage R&B. So that might be in soul or probably in blues. This is kind of a blues track. So let's see. Uh, let's look, see if we have anything in here. I like to try to find something that's close to what uh, my genre is or what my song is. You can't always get that, but uh, if you can, it's it's good. Uh, actually, maybe maybe some Amy Winehouse. I actually don't listen to a ton of Amy Winehouse, so I'm not sure. But just in my opinion, that maybe is close. So let's try this one. I could definitely be happy with that. But let's take a listen to some other ones. Let's go into the blues and do some jump blues. Now, here's the thing. When you're using this, it's important to kind of look here and think about some of the time periods. And the reason I'm saying that is because technology has changed over time. And if you use something from like, let's say 1945, this may not even have stereo in it. So that means it's going to cut down your side signal completely. Like you see here, it's cutting down a lot of my side signal. Um, yeah, here it's cutting down lots of it. Some of the other ones it doesn't. I think there's a few of them that cuts down pretty much everything. So, and that's because, yeah, like this one, Repetite. So actually, I wanted this song to sound a bit like Repetite by Jackie Wilson. But uh, you see here, everything's great. It's going to cut off everything. So I have no side signal now. So that's not necessarily good or bad. You might want that. You're like, okay, I want my stereo signal narrowed. I want it to sound like you know something vintage. Go ahead and do that. But just keep that in mind where it's like, sometimes you may not want that. You want a bit of a vintage sound, but you don't necessarily want things in mono. And by the same token, the same thing happens with, I believe, records, where you couldn't have a ton of bass in uh, record players because it would cause the needle to skip. Whereas CDs, that doesn't really matter. So... I, I'm not an authority on this, but from what I've heard, that once they started using CDs, more bass started to be added to songs. So if you wanted to sound competitive with modern records bass-wise, you may not want to use a vintage recording as your reference. You might want to use something more modern. But if you think, I don't care about that, I want it to sound like it's recorded you know, in 1970s or 1960s, feel free to use something more vintage uh, if you want. Uh, both are okay. and. Luckily, everything is up to you. You don't have to, uh, you know, choose one or the other. You can mix it and go in between if you want. You can use the wet dry to kind of blend together, etc. Uh, uh, Al Green, this be good. Make sure you turn your output down every time. You don't want to blow your ears out. So basically, that's how I did it. I don't want to go through all these, but 
hopefully it gives you a good idea. I like to, you know, sometimes go through some of these, especially ones I know and think like, oh, does this sound good? Sometimes, even though you like the song, you're like, this doesn't really fit with my song. But sometimes songs that you may not like, you may not be familiar with, you put it on there. It's like, oh, this is exactly what I want. So do that and experiment. Uh, another thing, if you want to put this in a linear phase mode since i'm using doing some mastering here and sometimes you do want that you can just turn this minimum phase off and we have uh sorry linear phase mode for the eq so feel free to do that might sound better maybe maybe not i don't know but this is what i did for this song is i had m dynamic eq as i showed you before but i use this one so I think a Joe Bonamassa track. And for me, this sounded the best. This is, uh, I don't know, when was this made? Probably 2000 something? Yeah, 2011, yeah. So it's not so old, but it's not like a, like a heavy metal track or like a hip hop track. This sounds more vintage. So here we go. This is what I have. So you can see it's scooping out some of those mids and just making things sound a little bit better in my opinion. Uh, also, I think normally this would probably boost the highs a lot. And so not only did I use that uh, EQ afterwards, you see this frequency max, I moved this down to 5,000. So here it's boosting a little bit. I just brought that down, flattens it out just a bit so it's not getting so much of a boost there just because I didn't think that was good. And it's boosting here in the low end, but there's actually nothing there, so it doesn't matter. But if you found like, oh, that's annoying, it's getting too much boost, uh, you know, it's like 30 hertz or something, you can just bring this up and it'll flatten that out for you. So that way you're not getting that huge bass boost or treble boost, because sometimes you just don't have any information up there and it will boost it up high. So just keep that in mind. So that's how I used M Matcher for this. After that, I used M Compare to compare this to some different tracks. And then I use a limiter, but this limiter is really not doing too much. I'm barely even hitting the ceiling there. Um, so actually, I probably turned down in matcher a bit. Uh, if I turn it up, it'll probably hit it. But I'm only doing like maybe like a decibel or so of limiting there. I'm really trying to let the dynamics through and. Uh, Hopefully I did that and hopefully it sounds like more of a vintage recording as opposed to like a more modern smashed uh, compressed recording. So this is how I like to use M Matcher for a master or something else. To be honest, when I first got this, I thought, you know what? I probably won't use this for mastering or something or putting on like the main bus. I like to do things manually with the EQ and everything. But after trying this, it was just easier, to be honest. I put this on here. I think I went to through two or three different, you know, profiles here. And I was like, oh, that just made everything sound better. And instead of wasting my time trying to mix every single frequency and, you know, move the different bands up and down, I just put this on here. And I was like, okay, that, that's better. And I thought, oh, maybe this song will sound better. Yeah, or nope. And it just saved me lots of time and energy. And I think it can do the same for you. So definitely check it out. If you have any more questions about M Matcher, let me know. I'll try to do a more thorough breakdown of this song in the future. But until then, please give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at melterproduction.com. Till next time, see you.